morning, everyone. It's Jatrina from the Alluring Bee Boutique and the Bee Map. And I'm back today to start a series of videos um, in which we will, uh, com when combined, we'll show you how to make this completed earrings. Um, the, first pro the first part of the project that we'll do is we're going to make the beaded bezel for this little 8 millimeter chiton. And these are Swarovski's. And we'll get into the materials here in just a moment. Um, the second part of the video, we will be using brick stitch around a frame, which I have several other videos available on YouTube, on my YouTube channel that show you how to do this particular step. But we will go ahead and complete it on part two of the video. We will be beating the inside edge of the frame, and then we will build the outside as well. And then finally, what we will do is we will be connecting this uh, the, the beaded bezel to the earring and we will finish off the earring here at the top and probably do some of the embellishment all right so let's move on to the materials all right so now for the let's move on to what we'll need for our materials to make this beautiful little earring we'll start out with the components First of all, you're going to need a bead frame, and the ones that I'm using for my earrings measure 25 millimeters, and that is on the inside diameter. If you can see here how I place this on my ruler, the inside diameter is 25. I get these components from Joann's, and they come in packs with multiple styles and sizes of the colors and these ones are antique brass as well as my earring findings which I get in a pack from when I want to use these base metal beautiful base metal type things you can get this little packs at Walmart or at your uh, local hobby stores and they come with chain eye pins head pins lobster claws jump rings and a few earring wires and so I happen to have those to match so that's what I'm using for for today the components themselves, the little frames come in these packs from Joanne, and you get all these different sizes. You can see that I kind of have them separated out by type instead of color. But they come in packs, huge packs, and they have several, like, of patterned, several sizes of the patterned. And they also have the plain frames. You get three sizes, three of each in three sizes. So they're pretty neat. They're relatively cheap. You can get them on sale a lot of times, and... It will save you a little bit of money if you'll shop the sales. Next, um, that's it for our components. Um, next, we're going to be using, uh, we'll need two crystals. And these are the Swarovski 8mm. And the color is Urnite. It's a beautiful, beautiful green. And I just really thought that they went really well with this project. You'll need two of those. Then we'll need some seed beads. And first we'll go we'll go in order of size. You'll need some 15 O's. And I'm using this beautiful Jonquil Rainbow Green Line Toho Seed Bead size 15. And they're really pretty. If you look in the light, you'll see how they have that hint of yellow uh, with the green shining through there. Really, it's hard to show you in this light here, but they are extremely beautiful and they have a high content of yellow when you um, dangle them up in the light. The next thing you're going to need are some Delicos, and these are just 11-0 Delicos. They are silver-lined dark topaz. There's the color code for the Mayuki code there, DB0144. You'll need some 8 C beads, and I am using Toho. These are silver-lined matte transparent firm green. And they really mimic the color of the Swarovski crystals, kind of a bluish green. It's really pretty, a pretty foresty green. And we'll need some chilas. And these are opaque canary, and I thought I would use those because they would match pretty well with the um, 15 OC beads. But they also give a nice contrast color to the project. So I'll be using these colors. You're going to need a size 10 beading needle, 
and we're going to use some thread. And what I'm using today is um, Nymo uh, size B, and this is the olive green. You know, when you use beading threads like nylon beading threads, you'll need some type of wax or conditioner. What I've done here for my conditioner, I ordered some microcrystalline wax because I did not like this beeswax too much that you get at, like in the sewing department or Walmart. It really leaves a he really heavy coat on the seed beads. And then when you're pulling your thread through, a lot of times you will see clumps of wax in your work. And that's even after I scrape it off of my fingers after I apply it and I still wind up with wax everywhere. So I ordered some of this microcrystalline wax from Fusion Beads and it comes in a little plastic cup. As you can see, I took a knife and I cut it into chunks. Well, I, my piece that I've been using was getting a little bit unmanageable. So what I did was I took apart this little sewing uh, thread conditioner kit here from Walmart. I pulled out the beeswax, then I just took my finger and I pressed a clump of that microcrystalline wax inside of this. That way I can take my beading thread and I can just rub it along there in the little groove and apply the wax to my thread. Another um, wax that I use a lot for this type of thread is um, Renaissance wax. And it is really a lot softer than these type of waxes here. And it comes in this little can, and it does have a smell to it. I'll just tell you that much right off the top of my head. But you can just take the thread, you put it inside the jar, or you just lay it in there, and put your finger down over it, and then just pull the thread through. And that actually works really well to help you thread these nylon beading threads through your small uh, eye holes of the beading needle. It will, you let it sit for a couple of seconds, and it, will pass through the needle much easier when you flatten it it will stay flat and you can get it into the beading needle that way all right so let me get this mess cleaned up and we will go ahead and move on to part one of our series all right so i've cleaned up my mess and we're ready to get started on part one of um of the series and for part one we're just going to be creating a, an adorable little beaded bezel uh, for this beautiful Swarovski crystal now, I've laid out my two colors of beads that we're going to need. We'll be only be using our Delicos, the Mikey Delicos, and the 15 O's for this part of the project. And I have some laid out here in a little pile. But before I start showing this, you know, the stitching part, I want to show you this cute little thing I got here. Because when I'm working with these small beads, I've been having a lot of trouble seeing lately. Um, I have prescription glasses, but I think I need to get my prescription checked. Anywho... I got this great little visor on Amazon, and it works super awesome. And it was really cheap, you guys. It was only like $15. But anyhow, it comes with this visor section. It comes with a head, a head strap right here. But you can also take the head strap off, and it came with glasses stems. So I like it better. I'm able to see a lot better if I use the strap. And in order to do that, I had to t take the little screws off and pull a, a metal nose piece off that came right here. And that thing was really not great. I could probably try to use some of old uh, nose pieces from my glasses to see if that would work better. But anyhow, I prefer it as with the head strap. But watch how this thing adjusts. It's really cool. You can take this part here and tilt it at several different angles like this. And that is super duper helpful. You can also take the lens portion and it adjusts on a diagonal like this. Then also it has this cool LED lights and they're pretty bright for when you're working. So I will be putting this on my head because like I said, I had trouble making this bezel and I want to make sure that I'm able to see correctly and show you guys as we move on. Right, to get started with our beaded bezel, the first thing that you're going to need to do is string on 20 of your 11 o Delicas. You're going to string them on. You're going to take your needle. You're going to pass back through all the beads again, come around in a loop. Then you can either tie a knot or pass simply through one more bead to close your loop, just like this. And we'll be using tubular peyote. And I don't really have a dowel small enough for this loop, but what I do have are these cute little daps that came with my dapping block, and I just so happen to have one that fits pretty good 
for doing tubular peyote. So I'm just going to slide this onto a dowel. It's just so much easier to do tubular peyote if you have something uh, that you can fit your circle of beads on. If not, what's going to happen is that when you do your... These, these beads we pick up count for row one and two. And if you have any, um, you know, questions about peyote like that, you can refer to... I've got some really good technique videos that I've been working on in there in my be bead stitching playlist on my channel. So... If you start without a dowel of some type, what happens is you're creating a flat piece of work and it's really hard to get it to roll over so that it sits like a tube and, a, you know, comes into a 3D shape like this. So I'll be using this and hopefully you'll find something you can use. So as with all peyote, what you'll do is you'll pick up one bead and then you'll, you can see that I'm exiting from this bead here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip a bead and I'm going to go through the very next bead. And that is how you work peyote, no matter which form you're doing. Flat, tubular, or any other type. And then when you pull it through, it will the beads that you're adding will sit beside the bead you skipped over. Just like that. So, to continue, all we'll do is we'll just continue that same particular step till we've worked all the way around. Now I'm exiting from this bead. I'm going to skip that bead and go through the very next one. Just like that. And you can see how this um, using a dowel really makes for some very neat work. And it works out just really great. So I'm just going to go ahead and repeat this step until I've worked all the way around. I'm going to pick up a bead. I'm going to skip the bead in front of where my thread is exiting and go through the next bead. And hopefully you guys know how to do this stitch. Um, I, maybe I should do a, a tutorial for tubular peyote. I haven't done one yet. I'm going to skip one, go through the next one. And I forgot to mention that I started out with a couple of about two feet of thread on my needle. And I had already waxed it before I started adding my first 20 beads. It's a little hard for me to see with my headset and keep an eye on my camera so hopefully I'm not going to go out of frame. I might slide this down a little bit further onto this dowel so that my thread doesn't continually get hung up on the end of this dowel right here. So let me pull it down a little bit. Okay. So I'm just going to keep working until I've come all the way around. And if you'll notice we picked up 20 beads but we'll only be adding 10 beads. And that's how our work you know, the first 20 wound up being rows 1 and 2, and the beads we're adding now wind up being row 3. And I'll show you once I finish this row how we can count that and take a look at it. Let me get my tail thread out of the way. I'm still having a little trouble with the end of my dowel, but it's okay. When I worked on the initial earring, what I did was I laid the end of it down like this on my workspace. And that way, I didn't have to worry about the thread coming across the end there. All right, so you can see here I've already made a mistake somehow. Because this bead is hung on the bead before it. So now it's in the right position. And you'll have to watch out for your thread getting hung on these beads that we're adding. So I'm almost back around. I'm coming out of this bead. I'm going to skip that bead and go through my next bead. Then I only have one more bead to add after that. Get my tail thread out of the way. So now I'm going to pick up my last bead. And I've got one bead that's sitting over a little way, so I'm fix it. Now I'm coming out of this bead. I'm going to skip that bead and I'm going to go through the very first bead I started from. And then I'm going to step up. And by step up, what I mean is I'm going to go up through the very first bead I added in this round, which is this bead right here to my left. Now, yours may be on the right if you're right-handed, but I'm left-handed, so you can see I was stitching on the left-hand side of this beadwork. So now I'm stepped up into the row that we just added when we started this round. And this is what the beadwork looks like. Also, I'll show you here... Um, how, how you can determine that this is row 3. 
Or you'll see where you have two beads sitting side by side. And then you have this one bead that's kind of catty cornered to the middle. So the beads that are sitting side by side, the one on the right is row one. The one above it is row two. The bead to the left is row three. So now we're ready to move on to row four. And at this point for our bezel, we are done with the delicates. And all we're going to be using now are these little 15 O's. Um, Green Lion Jonquil. So what we'll do is we're going to pick up a 15-0. We're coming out of the first bead of row f three right there. We're just going to pass through the very next bead on row three, which is the one sticking out in front of it. We're going to pull our little bead into position between those two delicas. We're just going to do that all the way around. So we pick up a bead and pass through the next one sticking out. And this is where it really comes in handy to lay the end of the dowel down like this. Let me get myself in frame. Pick up my next 15 0 And I'm just going to put, pass through the next delica sticking out. And these dowels also make it really easy to turn the work because all you have to do is rotate your dowel just a little bit. Pick up one. Go through the next one. And we'll continue on till we have our 10 beads added. And then we'll step up. We're going to be finished with row four. You might think these are some crazy color combina choices, and I did it first. I thought, well, I'm not so sure I like all this, but once I finally got the get everything embellished, I kind of really liked the way it all turned out. So we're almost around with our 15 O's. I'm getting ready to add the last 15 O. I've got it on my needle. This time when I pass through the Delica, I'm going to also pass through the very first 15 O that I added in this round. And I'm going to pull that through, and in that way, not only have we finished the row, but we're also stepped up for our next row. Now our next row is also 15 O's, so we'll just continue on. We're going to pick up our 15 O. We're coming out of the first 15 O we added in this round. This time we're going to skip the Delica and pass through the next 15 O, just like that. And for this remainder of this row, that's exactly the same step we're going to do. We're going to pick up our 15 0. We're going to skip the Delica and pass through just the 15 0 in front of it. You don't see as pronounced how the 15 0s are sticking out because they're smaller than the Delica. But we know that that's the beads of our last row because that's the ones we added. So I'm just going to take my time. Make sure that I don't skip any beads or pass through a Delica on accident. I'm just going to pick up 15s and pass through my 15s of the previous row. This time when we complete the round, we are not going to step up into this row. So I'm almost back around, adding these 10 beads. Oh, I'm sorry guys, I did not mean to get out of frame. I'm really sorry about that. I'm trying my best to stay in frame. Got two more to go. One more. So now I'm adding this last um, 15 0. I've got it on my needle. And what I need to do well, 
I've got a problem here, folks. Hold on just a moment. So what happened was, when I got back around here, I noticed that I had two Delicas, or two 15 -0s sitting in this little space. So all I did was put my needle inside of one of them and take my pliers, and I busted that bead out. So now my bead count is correct. So now I'm going to add my last 15 Now I'm picking it up on my needle. I'm going to pass through the 15 out from my very first round of 15 O's. And then if I wanted to step up, I would pass through that next uh, bead, the first bead from this row. And I'm just going to pass through the bottom one right there. I'm going to pull my last bead into position just like this. So now what I want to do is I want to move over to this side of my beadwork. So I'm coming out of, let me see where I'm at here, guys. I'm coming out of that green seed bead sitting in between these delicas right here. I'm going to pass through the delica in front of it right here. Then I'm going to pass through the Delica on the second row, right there, which is the single Delica sitting in between the sets. And I'm going to pull my thread. And then I need to pass through this Delica on the right, where I have two Delicas side by side, right there. And I'm going to pull my thread. And get my tail thread out of the way. So now I'm ready to work on this side of my beadwork. And for me, I'm just going to flip it over because it's easier for me to work this way. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to pick up a 15 out. I am coming out of this Delica that's sitting in a pair. I'm going to skip over the single Delica and I'm going to come through the next Delica that is sitting in a pair. Just like that. And then I'm going to pull my thread. Now I've gotten my first green bead in. And this is a little bit trickier because in tubular, because we were working this on, a, on the dowel, it does not make that sticking out bead quite as pronounced. So I want you to take your time, pick up a bead, skip a bead, and go through the bead that's part of a pair. Like that. And then try not to let your tail thread get hung up, or your working thread get hung on your dowel stick. So I'm just going to continue on until I have these beads added. And then of course we'll be adding 10 again. I'm picking up, skipping the single Delica, passing through the one on the left with a pair. That has a pair to it, just like that. I'm going to hold this tail thread out of my way because I certainly don't want to get it tangled up into my beadwork. If you tied a knot at the beginning, you can end your tail thread. Or if you don't mind working with a tail thread, you can leave it and use it to tie off your work later on. Now see, I think I've got my tail thread into my beadwork, so let me get it out. No, I don't. What I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you what happened there. When I was trying to add that last green seed bead, I was having trouble. It was wanting to flip over to the right-hand side of my work here. So what had happened was that as I poked my needle through the Delica, I had somehow gotten underneath the thread. So what I did is I took my needle and I just passed it back underneath those two Delicas right there under the work and pulled it through. So now that my thread is sitting where it needs to be. So hopefully when I pick up this green seed bead and pass through my next Delica, I'm going to, it'll sit where it needs to sit. So let's see it works. And there we go. So now it's sitting where it should be, which is between those two sets of Delicas right there. All right. Problem solved. 
So let me go ahead and finish this row. I'm going to pick up a Delica and I'll pass through the next Delica sticking out. Or pick up a C bean, I'm sorry, 15 now. I'm going to make sure I get in this Delica and not go under the previous stitch. Well, you can see that I'm almost back around here to where I'm going to be adding my last bead. So pick up my seed bead. I am coming out of that Delica. I'm going to go through the next Delica that has a pair sitting beside of it. And I'm not going to... I can also step up if I can get my needle in there. So I'm coming out of this one. I skipped one. I'm going through this one plus the first 15 0 I added in this round. And I'm going to pull my bead into position. So this is what we have so far. So now I'm going to slide this work down. We're going to do one more row of adding 15s. And we're going to add them in between the 15s that we just added in this round. So I'm coming out of that 15 now. I picked up a 15 and I'm going to go through the next one. So we're just basically doing the same thing we did on the opposite side of the delicas. Maybe I shouldn't have slid my thing down, but I'm just going to pick up, go through the next 15 up. We'll be adding once again ten fifteen O's. Make sure my thread didn't get hung up on my dowel. And that time it did. If you notice that your thread starts starting to look frayed. Uh, what you'll need to do is add a little bit more of your thread conditioner or your wax. And that will strengthen the thread so that your stitches will stay nice and strong. Alright, so I'm getting ready to add this last green bead. I am coming out of that green bead. I'm going to pass through the next one plus the first one I added in this round. Just like that. Because now I'm going to step up into that top row. That's what our beadwork looks like. So now we're ready to take this beadwork off the dowel. So now I've got my work off of the dowel. And I'm going to flip this work back around. Because I like stitching in this direction. So I'm exiting out of that green bead at the top, right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that off by stitching through all of my green beads that are stick, sticking out. Just like that. And I'm going to pull my thread through and work my way around until I've stitched through all of the top green beads. Just the ones on the top. Now I want you to take your time with this so that you don't accidentally get into any of your lower beads like I just did right there. I just want the top ones. And as I pull, I'm closing off this back side of my beadwork right here. And I'm tightening things up. And if you have to, you can do them one at a time. If you can't figure out which ones are on the top, or you can get it through a couple at a time, whichever it takes for you to do this. And this is one reason why I use the Nymo thread. Because as you can tell, I am skipping those bottom beads. 
and you would be able to see a little bit of the thread. But because I'm using this beautiful olive green thread, it's not going to present a problem for me to have a little bit of thread showing. So I'm going to keep working around this little side of my beads and just going through just the top del or top 15 out, just like that. And I should have been counting because what I would want to do is pass through beads, 11 beads. We'll go through all 10 plus one and that will final seal off or close up the beadwork for this reinforcing round. Alright, so now I've got this little cup shape formed here on the bottom. Just like that. And I'm going to set my stone down inside this little cup. Before I set my stone into the cup, we're going to need to work our way to this side of the beadwork. Let me come out just a little. So my thread is exiting this green bead on the top. In order to work my way across, I need to go through the green bead in the row below it. Then I also need to go through the delica, and then the del single delica, which constituted row two of our initial rows. I'm going to pull that through. Then I am going to move into the delica on row three that we started from. Then I'm going to go through the next row of green beads. And finally, I'm going to go up into that very top green bead on the opposite side, just like that. When you're moving, maneuvering through peyote, you always work on a diagonal through your rows. So now I'm at the other side of my beadwork, and I'm ready to put my stone in. So this next part is just a little bit tricky. You're going to get your beads set down inside your cup. And if it wobbles a little bit at first, try not to worry about it too much. But you'll want to make, make sure that it's in there and that all of your top row green beads are sitting above the edge of the crystal. Then what we're going to do is we're going to pass through just the top beads again like we did on the opposite side to close off the, inner, uh, the upper circle. So I'm exiting from that top green bead right there and I'm pushing through the next two top beads. And I'm not pulling it super tight at this point because I don't want to keep popping my bead out or my crystal out. And so I need to get my um, vision goggles in the right place. And then I'm just going to pass through a couple more top seed beads. And don't pull super tight yet. And if you do pull tight on accident, you can loosen it back up a little bit. And then I'm just going to keep working around these top beads until I've come all the way around 11 the count of 11. So there is six this will be eight the next two are ten and once I pass through that tenth bead I'm going through the bead I started from but before I pull that tight I'm going to jump through the very next bead right there number eleven Now I can set it down and shape it up. As I pull this thread tight, I can f position my little crystal inside so that it sits in there and the beads are now tight around it, just like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go through it one more time. And as I work this around this time, I'm going to make sure that I try to keep this beadwork in a round. And I don't want too much on one side and not enough on another side. You know, just play with it until you get it in there to where it suits you. And I use my fingers to shape these beads and to pull that crystal into center, just like that. So I've got mine looking really good and I have tightened it all up. So now I need to work my thread off the top of the crystal here and work down to where I can end off my thread. So I'm coming out of that top C bead right there. I'm going to pass down through the next C bead on the previous row and then through the Delica 
on the previous row on a diagonal, just like that. I'm going to pull that through. Now you'll remember that that, that Delica was one of the two that sit side by side. So next I'm going to pass through the one that sits by itself, and then I'm going to go through the one that sits side by side on the opposite side. I'm going to pull that through. Whoops. I'm going to try not to, you know, sling it all over the house. So now I'm coming out of that Delica. I'm going to pass through the next green seed bead. And then I'm going to pass through the green seed bead that's sitting above it. Just like this right here. So now I'm on the top row of green seed beads on the bottom of my little bezel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch around those top beads again on this side just to tighten this up a little bit further. And then I'll show you guys how to end the thread. But if you want, you can go ahead and restitch your little uh, bottom row here on the bottom of your crystal. That just will help pull everything into position and keep your crystal nice sitting nicely inside the bezel. So I'm going to take my time and I'm going to go ahead and pass through each one of those top green beads on this side of my beaded bezel and make sure that I'm only going through those ones on that very inner row. It's a little time consuming but in the long run it'll be worth it because your bezel will look a lot nicer. And your crystal will sit in there the way that it's supposed to and not be flopping around all over the place. So now I have tightened everything up and I've got everything positioned the way that I want it and I'm going to show you how, I'm not going to end the thread actually. I'm going to leave this thread on this crystal because I'm going to use that thread to attach the crystal to the, the beadwork that we're going to do next. But first we need to position the thread where it needs to be. So I'm exiting from that top green C bead right there. I'm going to take my needle and pass through the green C bead on the previous row the next Delica, which is part of the two, and then I'm going to step into that Delica, which is on row two from the very beginning. And those are the beads that we're going to be using to attach this to our our next, uh, you know, the earring once we get working on the bead frame. All right, so that's it for this part of the video. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you guys stay tuned for the next uh, couple of portions of this project. And in the meantime, if you are looking for holiday gift ideas, check out my playlist that is, uh, you know, entitled Great Holiday Gift Ideas. And there, there are several little videos on there that show you some quick and easy projects that you can do um, to make beautiful holiday gifts for your friends and family. All right, guys. Thanks for watch watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time.